Hello, welcome to Soapbox. This is Radiotimes.com's new weekly soaps podcast. I am Jonathan Hughes and joining me is... David Brown. So you may recall David Brown and I used to do weekly videos talking about the soaps on Mm. Radiotimes.com. But that's all gone now, David, isn't it? This is a brand new exciting venture for the viewers. Tell us, how how did we end up here, literally? Well, you're going to be getting more of us now because you just used to get us in 60 second bursts. Some might say that's enough. Uh, You know, up until today, I didn't even realise all this was being filmed. I know. I thought one of the benefits for the viewers was that... (laughs) They don't need to look at us. Yeah, anymore. But yeah, evidently we're still being seen on screen. Uh, But yeah, What's happened is that I've basically spoiled everything because <laughs> <laughs> I've gone and got myself a new job. Well done, you. Yeah, uh, here at Radio Times. I'm now working on the magazine rather than the website. It just means that I don't have as much time as I used to as far as soaps are concerned. This is true. So you're yeah. running the running the soap show now, aren't you? But David is still in the soaps family of the Radio Times brand. Mm-hmm. Um, but So we thought it was kind of time for a change and also time for us to get together because we used to sit next to each other as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. You know, w- w- I'm missing that. Yeah, are you? I'm really? Not, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> you made good tea. Oh, I, yeah, I do make good tea, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And now I do I'm make better tea than you. I'm on the... <laughs> The other now I can say that because we don't sit next to each other. Well, do you know why you you, you used to use the kettle and yeah. boil, actually boil the kettle? I just used yeah. to use that hot tap. It's not very nice. No, I know. Yeah. So I'm now sitting on the other end of the Radio Times office. Yes, and I am lonely. So we yeah. thought we'd do this just so we can catch up, basically, on this what's happening our in our lives. We might often talk about you know what we had for breakfast or what we did at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Or hope you don't mind. I hope that's okay with the listeners <laughs> and the viewers. How was your weekend, David? No, I'm not going to get into that now. Um, so that is why we're doing this, but it is very exciting. And we have talked about doing a podcast for a while. So I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's this is what the world needs. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you've demanded, viewers. Yeah. I've kind of seen on the comments on YouTube. Yes. When are you coming back? Yeah. Uh, we plan our week around this. God bless you all. Um, so it's your... It's, it's your idea, really. Yeah. It's your fault, you were going to say, then, <laughs> weren't you? I was going to, but, yeah. uh, Yes, we are very, very grateful for the support. Yeah. So here we are. We hope you like it. So we'll be doing this every week. And kind of, yeah, a whistle-stop tour of What's soaps, a review of the week, and a little bit of a tease, a bit of spoiler action about mm-hmm. what is coming up next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll start with this week. So we're going to run through soap by soap. This is the format, David. I'm telling you now. I'm in charge. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with EastEnders this week. Okay. So we'll just explain that we're recording this on Halloween. Yes, we are. On Thursday. The 31st of October. Hence my... I, if I'd have known I'd have been on camera, yeah. I wouldn't have worn such a schlubby Ghostbusters I t-shirt. I thought you were going to say you would have dressed up in Halloween fancy dress costume. <laughs> yeah. Could what you would you have dressed as? Pennywise. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> or, or um, like Michael Myers, so you wouldn't have been able to see. My oh, face. just the shape. Yeah, and you couldn't have talked as Michael Myers doesn't just breathe. <laughs> exactly. So it just would have been <laughs> half an hour of <sighs> <laughs> yeah. and me saying, "What do you think about EastEnders, Michael?" Yeah. What about you? What oh, would I you, dressed you, up as? You've dressed up as Freddy Krueger in the past, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did dress as Freddy Krueger once um, on a, a Halloween party and it was really hot and I was wearing a really hot jumper and a mask and I fainted as Freddy Krueger. <laughs> so I'm not wearing that again. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I probably wouldn't ever dress like that again. But, no. um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Morticia? <laughs> That's just my daily outfit. <laughs> I can't out Michelle Visage, Michelle Visage, though. She's obviously owned that now from her performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there were some good uh, Halloween costumes on display in EastEnders, wasn't there? The Queen Vic party has become, since the Carters took over the Vic, Halloween's become a thing, hasn't it? It has. Or, um, Although it was different this year because it's usually Herman Munster, isn't it, that yes. uh, Mick Carter goes for? But yeah. what was he this time? Some kind of exposed brain thing? Um, was he a doctor, like a weird. Doctor, like medic, a gothic thing. doctor. Yeah, yeah. Bloody. Oh, and Linda was like the nurse. The nurse. Yeah. Did you notice that um, they were kind of sowing the seeds of Linda's alcoholism storyline? Yeah. Like, every time it kind of cut to her, she was like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> necking it. some punch. I think, yeah, <laughs> that's how it starts. Don't you? I know. Please drink responsibly. Anyone at a Halloween party? Yeah. Yes, they were seeding that. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually did miss the Herman Munster outfit because that was a highlight of the year. Danny yeah. Dyer is Herman Munster. Yeah, so but he's obviously good. been retired. 
that costume. Maybe they lost the rights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The you. monsters people got 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 annoyed, threatened yeah. to sue. Yeah. So that's the thing of the past. So he was like a doctor, but he was also a bit of a counselor, wasn't he? Because he yeah. was kind of there as a shoulder to cry on for honey. He, well, I think that his method of um, counselling honey was quite questionable, though. Your assault. Your raving assault. <laughs> I mean, I don't, did that make her feel any better about us? <laughs> well, if Linda's reaction shots were just her necking punch, yeah. Honey's were just like looking anguished, weren't they? Very anguished. It was yeah. like she'd just been told she's in the dance off. <laughs> <laughs> she had that exact same expression. <laughs> Safe to dance next week. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Honey and Adam. She did look a bit dance off nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah she, she did. I mean, no wonder because she's with horrible. The dentist of doom, Slick Adam. Adam. We don't like Adam, Adam, do we? No. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it was quite a good Halloween episode. It didn't quite hit the gothic heights that we've had in previous years. No, it beca- yeah, they, we have. Lauren, the Weeping huge. Angel. Oh, yeah, and the apple bobbing with Lauren and Abby. That's that my personal favourite. Or uh, when Stacey got electrocuted. Good times. When her brother showed up. Did you see it then? I think that oh, was yeah, Halloween. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. And Paul Nicholas <laughs> emerged. Yes. Out of the gloom. Hello, Terrorise Kathy. Yeah, that was great. But, but none of that, really. No. None of that. I, I do feel like... Key. I do feel like, um, other than... Uh, the start of the week was quite explosive. Stacey was back. That was all the big thing going on. Then we had the Panasars. And yeah. then... Um, I don't know, I kind of felt like EastEnders was a bit cruising towards the end of the week. It felt to me like that it was a building week yes. that they were kind of looking towards yes. the next couple of weeks. So they were putting these building blocks in place. They had to introduce the history with Ash and her... A lot of exposition. Termin- termination yep. was a big thing, wasn't it? And yep. then you got the Stacey. It's been quite clever the way they've kind of engineered having Martin be on the street, on the screen. Square and Stacey not be there. I'm quite convinced yeah. by that. I thought yeah, all the Martin tricky. and Ben stuff is quite good. I love Martin and Ben. Yeah. And I'm really glad that they've uh, gone back into one of my favourite portions of history, which is uh, uh, Be- Martin kidnapping Ben as a little kid and dangling him off the yeah. railway bridge. Yeah. No one ever remembers that. I brought that up not long ago. People thought I'd made it up. And now it's like become a huge plot point again. I think it's that Martin, though. Current Martin is Current so Martin. tall. Yeah. When they were dangling him off that bridge, his yeah. head was almost at the floor. <laughs> if they just let go, he'd have just kind of slumped onto. He would have been fine. He would have swept the street. <laughs> he would have been okay. I think that's why Ben got other people to beat him up because no way in the world could anyone beat up Martin. He's like massive. No, it would have been like when Scrappy Doo used to go up against the ghosts. <laughs> let me at him. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been as convincing as that, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, what about Martin and Stacey? How, let's let's dis- discuss that because Stacey's obviously off on maternity leave. Lacey Turner's off on maternity leave in real yeah. life. Um, we didn't quite know when we were going to see Stacey again. No. And then um, some carefully shot uh, scenes on you know in a, in a random hotel room set. Was uh, that did it work same, for you, what, do you think? Was it the same hotel room that Alfie Moon was staying in when Hayley Slater <laughs> <laughs> went round? <laughs> it's, it, it's the Hotel of Deceit. Yeah, it really is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's the Room of Lies. But it kind of gives EastEnders a bit, a, a bit of a get-out card where Stacey is concerned. She can just kind of stay off screen for as long as... Lacey Turner That's wants true. to be away for now. Yes, because now she has a, an understandable reason, as you say. I did yeah. feel a bit like, and I'm glad they wrapped it up, but when Martin kind of throwing Sonia under the bus, Sonia's done nothing wrong. And I thought, <laughs> like, the next episode, I thought, oh, what if, like, Stacey actually, like, turns up at the square and, like, punches Sonia yeah. and beats her up? And Sonia's got no idea, like, what's going on? <laughs> what's, what's going on? What's happening? I just said, we know one. She wouldn't have a clue. So I do feel a bit like... Um, you know, Jean and Stacey Slater are kind of sitting there thinking, she's the scarlet woman and she's yeah. done nothing wrong. Yeah. It's a bit unfair. She needs to be vindicated. I Justice for Son. Does. Justice for Sonia. Please yeah. join our crusade. Yes, yeah, so that was earlier in the week. Indeed uh, it was. At, at the time of recording, we haven't seen Fridays, but Indeed. we've been told that... We're too busy <laughs> to watch Fridays. <laughs> we just haven't been given access yet, let's oh, be honest. Um, Mariam and Arshad yeah. are... Uh, are leaving. They've gone. They've so gone. I feel like the um the older end of the cast are being kind of culled. Ted Murray left. Yeah. Like that was no one really knew that was happening. He just got in a cab one day and left not yeah. long ago. And now bye bye Mary Amanasha. So. I think in three months' time it should turn out that they've all been murdered by that woman <laughs> who Ted Ted went off with. 
What was she called? <gasps> oh, what was her name? Yeah, because that's still ambiguous. Yeah, she could be like the OAP slasher. Oh my gosh. You know? Oh my gosh. I hadn't thought of that. But I mean, I love that. The, the, the problem is. I love people being murdered. Yes. <laughs> it's good, a good admission for episode one. The problem is. Like, share, and subscribe, kids. If you uh, get rid of all these elderly characters, yeah. then there's no one in whom people can confide. Yes, and there's no voice of wisdom or yeah. experience I on mean, the square. I mean, there's dot, but yeah. you get the impression that June Brown's workload is a little bit lighter yes. than it once was. And, you know, quite rightly, she's 92, yes. uh, doing a brilliant job. But, yeah, you know, she obviously can't be in every single scene, much as we'd love that. i tell you who I miss, and who is actually back quite soon, is Pam Coker but and she... Les Coker, but Pam particularly. Phil's... Les isn't back, though, is he? Les, Les is not back, no. Les or Christine, <laughs> neither of them are back. Yes. I don't know whether he a heel broke on the way to Walford or yes. something. I don't know. But um, yes, yeah, so we've got Pam popping back. I think that is what you're missing. I think you're right. You haven't got like an like the, the square needs an, a, a gran and a grand. A nana figure. Yeah, and a Lou Beale. Yeah, they haven't yeah. got a Lou Beale was hardly like cuddly though, was she? Do you remember? People talk about that. Oh, they need Lou Beale. Like, oh, she give you a No, she wouldn't. <laughs> oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> a baby in your rage. <laughs> Who's the dad, Michelle? Yeah, but she was not <laughs> cuddly Pam Coke because she wasn't like one of the Shreddies' nanas, was no, she? No, but I remember Ian kind of getting tearful with his nana once. He, he probably thought he was going to get a punch. <laughs> yeah. She was like, no nonsense. <laughs> she was zero tolerance now. She was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Pam yeah. is back. Yeah, She's going to have to get back. used to the fact that Ben's got a whole new face. Hello, Ben. What's happened to your face, dear? <laughs> yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> but I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward say. to that. So, yeah. They should never have got rid of her in the first I place. I agree. Out with the Ahmeds, uh, in with Pam, very yes. briefly. But, yes, that's looking forward a bit. Uh, also wanted to talk about the Panasars and Ash and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, they've been drip-fed, I feel. This is kind of what they did with the Taylors a few years ago. Mm. We met Keegan, if you remember. He was in it as a... Um, a tearaway teenager for a couple of months mm -hmm. and then as it turned out his he was related, to, was the related to the Taylors when they moved so they kind of built this family around Ash who mm -hmm. has been kind of a fairly minor player thus far Ikra's girlfriend uh, we've met some of the Panasars before due to some kind of criminal uh, mastermind underground nonsense with yeah. Martin and Ben which is yeah. all a bit fun but a bit silly so now they're kind of establishing them as as characters family what did you make of this i felt there was a lot of exposition very much to so. wade through did I that quite, get in the way i quite liked pudgy panasar which one's he the, the one who ke keeps on being comedically body shamed <laughs> all the time the, the dopey one yeah oh yeah the one body shamed by the younger brother yeah he talked about his mangoes yeah yeah <laughs> he's quite fun jags jags yeah he's good the, good the, value the older one yeah he seems kind of quite um like he, he doesn't vary his tone of vocal delivery very much. That's true. Is that because he's uh, a bit of a scary, menacing baddie, and they don't have any um, intonation, perhaps? Kind, yeah, but it's that, a bit like Liam Neeson. That's what baddies are like, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, and Graham in Emmerdale. Yes, that's right. They Always the same. Monotone. Yeah. So does that make you fear him, or just think, "I wish you"? I just felt he was a bit Spock-like. <laughs> bit Vulcan. A bit Vulcan, yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's the inspiration. Yeah. They didn't try very hard with Halloween either. The Panasar should have made a big camp entrance <laughs> for Halloween <laughs> and turned up like it was RuPaul's Drag Race or something like that. That's the way to make an impression on viewers. Uh, what a missed opportunity. Family misery. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's, they're not a happy family, are they? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes new families come into the square and they establish themselves and then you their life goes horribly wrong after a few months of living in the square. I feel yeah. like the Panasars have got a really horrible life anyway. Yeah, yeah. So they thought, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll move to Walford. Everyone's miserable yeah. there. Yeah. That um, is usually the trajectory, isn't it? It's it the is. classic Ronnie and Roxy turn up yeah. with those adverts, you know, yeah. stepping out with their glitzy cowboy hats. And yeah, that. Ibiza, and Ibiza, Ibiza tan yeah. and then get drown five years <laughs> later. <laughs> so good luck, Panasars. Good luck. Welcome to the neighbourhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so they're here. Um, anything else you want to report on EastEnders? Some Mel and Sharon? Um, well, it's I'm liking the Battle of the Blondes. I'm liking the Battle of the Blondes. In one corner, you've got Mel with her yeah. very confrontational jaw. And very <laughs> confrontational jaw. And then in the other, yeah. Sharon, yeah. quivering lip. Confrontational quiver. Darting eyeballs. Lots of that. Uh, and we've kind of seen some paparazzi photographs, haven't we, yeah. of uh, an upcoming... 
A car, car crash? Crash, yes. maybe, which all seemed very Steve Owen, didn't it? I wonder if history oh. is going to repeat itself. What? Because mm, Mel's leaving quite soon. Yes, yeah, so a Mitchell v. Owen oh. showdown. Oh, just like the but, old days. But with the women oh, yeah. rather than the chaps. It's like when they remade Ghostbusters. Yes. <laughs> like right. the logo that on was your a T-shirt. Yeah, but, um, let's it, do that. Oh, that's intriguing. Maybe peroxide that's... Wars. I'm enjoying... <laughs> Battle of the Blondes. Yeah, I'm enjoying that. Yeah, I'm enjoying that. Uh, yeah, I think that's all for EastEnders. Yes, that's fine with me. That's uh, the Duff Duff's done. The Duff Duff is Duff Duff. Yeah. We've Duff Duff that. So we're going to go uh, get in our cable car now and, <laughs> and descend up the Orm <laughs> in Lendidno, North Wales, uh, yeah. where we find uh, Gemma giving it her all. Do you think she's going for Best Dramatic Performance <laughs> at, at next year's Soap Awards? It's going to be on several clips packages. That, I think that, it is. It's such a weird mix of tones, though, at number five, yeah. Coronation Street, at the moment, because you've got this quite dark and brooding Kel and Paul yeah, which I feel historic is, sexual abuse. We've not seen line. a lot of that recently. It seems to have been put down. Yeah. And on the other hand, you've got this like scamming, pregnancy, yeah. comedic, yeah. oh, Gemma's expecting quads malarkey. Yes. And now that she's had her babies, I do kind of worry that. What always happens with soap babies and children is that they're just usually forgotten about. They are. You never see them. You know, they're always kind of like, oh, who's actually looking after these yeah. these babies? A lot of the time, characters are in the pub, and whether it's the Rovers or the Vic, and no one mentions they well, often like, very young young children. It's like an EastEnders <laughs> this this week. You know, what, what was Ollie doing while the, while his mum and dad were kind of oh, staging think, this huge Halloween bash? I think Linda did say that she put Peppa Pig on. Oh, well, that's going to do it, isn't it? That's, <laughs> so that's fine. fine. <laughs> for hours. Yeah, for an entire, like, evening. Yeah. But with... Uh, yeah. Um, so I want to put him to bed, but, but just put Peppa Pig on. Yeah, just in, you yeah. know, never-ending loop. Uh, but with Gemma, the fact that they've made such a big thing out of the fact that she's had four babies... Yeah. Th- 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 <coughs> is, you're not going to be able to have a scene where it's just the two of them anymore, Chesney and Gemma. Yeah, they're, it, they're always going to be defined by yes. this. It does ha- It does kind of um, tie them, doesn't it, to to something that I don't, it's just going to make it more complicated. Yeah. yeah. I do feel like maybe they haven't thought it through. They've just thought of the comedy of the concept yeah. and um, and that's and that's it. So but it can't I, always I be, be comedy. It can't always yeah. be like, oh, you know, like running around. Because I've brought up two children and if... if it's re- no laughing matter, is it, David? It's no la- I think if the reality of those first six months yeah. were... were, were no, if people told the truth about what a treadmill it is, yeah. the human race would die out. <laughs> <laughs> no one's told Gemma, have they? No. She's got to pop four out. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the fact that she's got four, yeah. I'm expecting Breakdown by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Best comedy performance. Um, can, can, you, dread- uh, can you name, off the top of your head, Don't Cheat... All four of Gemma's babies and who they were named after, please. Uh, were was they named? Was it uh, Mickey, Davy, <laughs> Peter? Were they named after the monkeys? Uh, I think they rejected that idea in a story conference. Uh, was they one of them called Caris? One of them is called Caris. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. I only remembered one. <laughs> I've memorised them already. So Caris, oh. yeah. Bryn. Oh, they were Welsh names. That's Welsh right. Welsh names. Yeah. yeah. Cleo and yeah. Aled. Now, Bryn was after the surgeon who did, who did the C-section. Yeah. I think Cleo was the midwife. Oh, and Alec, because he was working in the air. He was there working in the air. <laughs> uh, and also, Alid was a paramedic, as was Karis, I think. Okay. So okay. I would just predict that is a pub quiz question for the future. So memorise this, viewers and okay. listeners, because I think this is going to come up maybe. I don't want to do that pub quiz. Do you not want to do, <laughs> do, you want to do the Gemma's Quads pub quiz? Definitely you could get through, you get through to the finals. Not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think that's. Um, it was so, nice to see Landidno because I have um, a family in that part of the world, and it looked absolutely lovely. Clearly not October. <laughs> it was like the height of summer. Beautiful sunny day. Yeah. Uh, very ambitious filming up that cable car. Why did he pull the brake? Or whatever he did. Did he? I thought whatever he just got stuck for <laughs> comedy reasons. No, he pulled something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether that was explained. No, I don't think so. What do you mm. do that for? Well, I'm having a baby. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I think that's all we can say about that strand is that nice to see North Wales. <laughs> but an, an, an uneasy mix of comedy and drama. I that's agree. And I do think um, I didn't think there was enough Daniel aftermath, to be honest. I know that the Sinead 
death week was absolutely harrowing but it was very good and i felt i was invested in it i think all the audience was invested yeah. with it i understand poor rob mallard needs a holiday and That's i totally support like to that me. but i felt he should have not just left in that monday episode straight after i understand I, why yeah. logistics but i felt that we were i just wanted to t- to be with that story a bit longer and like you say the uneasy tone to then go straight into the Gemma like you know sitcom stuff was very uneasy and it was quite jarring and I do feel like after Monday did anyone really mention Sinead that much I think that Rob Mallard had booked his annual leave like a year ago (laughs) he was like nope I'm going this week I don't care what else is going on I don't care who's died (laughs) I don't care how many BAFTAs yeah. you're going to give us. He was yeah. he was around for the, uh, uh, yet another scene where Bethany was shamed. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. I'm very, very upset about this. Poor Bethany, and I hope this is going to be explored when he comes back and, and she will be vindicated. Yes, as you say, yet another scene where Bethany was shamed. And yeah. I just don't even know where they did it. To no. be honest, I don't know why Daniel and Bethany had to kiss last week. It it kind of was a bit of a misfire in that whole week for me, in a very very strong one of Corey's you know most uh, moving and harrowing and real it was brutal deaths ever in soap ever I think yeah. uh, still reeling. Um, but the whole Bethany thing, I just didn't get it. And then to go back to it, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's almost like they're kind of punishing Lucy Fallon for leaving. You <laughs> know, think that's what it is. Gonna, <laughs> we're just going to make your character loathed before we'll make you everyone go. hate you. You know, we'll make everyone hate you. Yeah. yeah, I did feel a bit like that. I tell you, who doesn't hate Bethany though, and who doesn't hate anyone because she's all zen-like is Gail. Yeah, Gail. Gail's back and she's in harem pants. And Discuss. I, I'm much preferring them doing this with Gail yeah. and having her be married off to somebody else unsuitable. Yes. And they said, I think, Corey have said, you know, obviously Gail had a break for a bit and they they were like, what do we do with her? What do we bring her back with? What storyline? Shall we give her a love interest that's a serial killer? No, let's not do that. So, yeah, new ground for Gail. The Tower of Gail. The Tower of Gail? (laughs) (gasps) What would Gail do? I think she should start, like, teaching... Yoga maybe in the community center or like in the middle of the bistro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the yeah. yoga mat. Yeah, and her and Audrey could have another accident. <laughs> oh, yeah. She could fall over while downward dogging. No, not dogging. Doing the downward <laughs> dog. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah, my darling, oh, yeah. I don't want to be downward dogging. What do you call it that for? Oh, ma'am, don't be so silly. That's when it moves to nine o'clock. That's BGT the, semi-final week. B- Shock dogging storyline for Audrey <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> that would certainly make Audrey go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think though that Gail will have to kind of soon turn her attention to Sarah, um, because she's being caught up in this imbroglio with Maria and oh, Adam yeah. and Gary Windows. I saw some moody photo where they were all kind of walking purposefully <laughs> towards the camera that for no a bit reason. Like that hearsay publicity photo. <laughs> yeah. So it looked like an album cover. Pure and simple Christmas yeah. cover version. Yes. Featuring it, these four. Yeah, here they are, exclusive first look. Yeah. Yeah, very moody. Um, well, this I did want to discuss Maria and Gary, actually, so mm. we segue quite nicely into that. Um, uh, Maria and <laughs> Gary, and that bizarre bit where Gary was dressed in a gold oh, yeah. bodysuit. Yeah. Isn't he meant to be, like, the biggest villain on the street since Pat Phelan? Yeah, <laughs> way to undermine that. <laughs> I can't really take him seriously now. No. Um, when he when he starts duffing people up or asking asking old ladies for their money, how come he's bothering being a criminal when he's got a very successful antiques business? Is it an antiques business? Is, is he it? like Lovejoy? I think it's Lovejoy. Yeah, it's Love. He should start talking to camera like Lovejoy oh, used to do. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think just do that. I don't know whether this whole villain thing's really working for Gary. So let's just do a, a comedy cheeky chappy antiques dealer yeah. story instead. <laughs> when he just. <laughs> <laughs> when he turns up at auctions in gold lame skin tight suits, I, you know I'm here for the gold lame. I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. support that. Yeah. I think I think that'd be good. But yeah, slightly undermined it. I think maybe they were trying to make him um, nice, Gary, so Maria would fall for him. But let's be honest, Maria would fall for the you know Deliveroo guy. <laughs> she kind of gives her heart. It's a very kind way of saying that Maria sort of puts it about a bit. Let's be honest. But she does. Her nickname at school was. Uh, oh, the bike or something like that, wasn't because it? Because she did a bike ride for charity. No other reason. No other reason. No other all. reason. Um, 
Yeah, so but I do feel like they're kind of just putting the pieces in place for, for the Gary story to ramp up again because that's been a bit quiet. And also, I think they just want to put another damsel in distress in the mix because Sarah and Gary are no longer together. Yeah. So Sarah's not really in any danger from Gary now. So they'd need to put Maria almost in jeopardy with him. But, but what's menacing know, about Gary? <laughs> apart from his peaky blinders haircut. <laughs> That's all that's menacing about him. No, not Tommy Shelby, Tommy Cannon. That's what we said. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, not, I'm not that menace, especially post Gold Lame. No. Um, uh, I know he's killed some people, but yeah, I'm not really scared of him. I'm afraid. No. I think because Phelan was such a strong villain, um, and he's kind of the next one to kind of take that mantle. Yeah. He's got a really big, you know. Big Isn't Tyrone's daughter is scarier? <laughs> She should be the Hope. next villain. Yeah, she, she kind of is the next villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Hope and Gary team up? Yes. But Hope's like the, the power She's behind... She's the brains. Yeah, she... <laughs> Gary, go out. Go out and kill this teacher yeah. at school. Yeah, it's like child's play. <laughs> I love that. But uh, yeah. uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was Shona and her yeah. determination to get married yes. against the odds. Yes. Why does Shona want to get married in the bistro? Has she not seen what's happened in the bistro in the past? I don't think that's in the brochure or the terrible things that have happened in the in the bistro. She they got married in the bistro. Two days later, she found out she got terminal cancer. Oh, Michelle yeah. got married in the bistro and she yeah. got shot on her wedding day. She didn't even make it to the vows. She got <laughs> shot. So what is the big attraction? What in going is the to big the attraction? Bistro? I'd say don't get married in the bistro. No. She's going to be buying the entire stock of Preston's petals just to cover. <laughs> Julia Goulding's baby bump. Oh, well. I know. Yeah, there's been a, a, um, a lot of that. And it is obviously not going to end well, the the possible wedding in the bistro, because we know that Julia Goulding is going off to have a baby in real life. So yeah. even if she gets her dream bistro wedding, <laughs> what little girl isn't dreaming of that? Um, clearly, she's not sticking around. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, another successful bistro wedding <laughs> yeah. in the offing. Well done, Robert. Mm. Uh, so anything else to discuss from Coronation Street? No, I think we should move on to the high octane casino drama that was <sighs> Emmerdale. Still reeling from that. Baby driver. <laughs> yeah. Poundland baby driver. Poundland baby. Ocean's 11 and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was a bit odd. Yeah, so this was on Emmerdale this week. We found out that uh, Mandy yeah. and... Charity were in cahoots. Yeah, they were. Uh, robbing that bloke who, if you're of a certain age, you remember used to be Mike Bentley on Grange Hill. Yeah. He was Renee's. Renee Zaga. Yeah, not Renee Selweger. No. I, I thought when I read that, I was like, <laughs> Renee Selweger. Yeah. No, not, yeah, yeah. Uh, Renee Zaga, yeah, he was Mike Bentley and he was also on the bill for a while as well, but which actor wasn't. But uh, yeah, he was like an athlete on Grange Hill in like the early 90s. But uh, yeah, here he is, still running, but this time just after Mandy uh, and in a Charity flashback. in yeah. a flashback. A very weirdly staged yes. uh, flashback. I felt like uh, it, there was a lot of padding. It felt a bit a bit odd yeah. and a bit like capery and a bit a bit unnecessary, if, if I'm honest. Um, but also, Mandy kept ending the scenes <laughs> with the same sort of line, and they, they'd have a flashback, and she'd run around, and there'd be some like setting fire alarms off, robbing safes. Then you'd like back to present day yeah. and then one of the dingles would say oh Flair and I can't believe it and then Mandy at the end of the scene would go oh, that's not all I'll tell you everything she told us everything like four times yes. because she kept like repeating so yeah. I, see, I don't know I think they obviously wanted to give a bit of a game. bit of fun Light and shade, though, David. Light and shade. But it's it, kind of boats blowing up every week, and revelations of secret sons, can we? But it, again, it didn't feel like the repercussions of of that previous week. Yes, yeah, so I agree. We felt all that much. Yeah. There were several scenes. You mentioned it to me earlier in the week, where um, Moira and Chaz had oh, the yeah. same scene where they kept on like kind of having <laughs> to go at each other in public. Oh, not now, Chaz. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> like four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, where she is. <laughs> You didn't say that when you were copping off with Uncle Farmhand. It was, yeah, it was quite, I felt like it was a bit repetitive to some, some of the kind of story yeah. developments on Emmerdale this week and that we didn't see enough of Nate and Kane and explore, I thought Cara Robinson, Nate's um, bike of a barmaid mum from 21 years ago was going to turn up. I'm waiting for her. Cara Robinson. She's going to be the Christmas yeah. Day arrival, I reckon. Out of a cab. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah. What are you having? <laughs> How much exposition <laughs> was that that as well? That was a like, lot, yeah, a lot of monologue. Yeah. A lot of monologue. And yeah, and now it's kind of we've sort of moved away from it a bit, haven't Completely. we? Completely. Yeah. So I kind of wanted a bit more on that. I don't like scams. Don't you like scams? Don't you do scams? I have don't you ever do robbed any a casino? Scams, no. Are you sure? Uh, I've not In even, flashback even. No, I've never even <laughs> 
I never even like shoplifted as a kid or anything. Didn't Not even penny you? chews or from Woolworths or anything like that. No, um. I'm too straight. But um, I thought that uh, Mandy yeah. needs to be defined by something other than the fact that she's a little bit, a uh, little bit, you know. Yeah, it's a, a bit, bit Del dodge. Boy, a bit leopard. Leopard print Del Boy, isn't it? And what it? is going on with her and Vinny then if he's oh, not I'm, the son? Are they lovers? I really hope not because I just think that's so weird. Uh, well, they, they should lovers? have a scene where the, the episode just starts with them in bed. Yeah. Hey, that my grand. He reaches for his glasses. Thanks, son. Don't call me that. Not where it's just us. Yeah, oh, do you think that's what it is? Yes. Yeah. Your mind's in the gutter. Definitely. I just thought they were very good friends. No, they should wake up surrounded by like <laughs> casino chips and banknotes, <laughs> like it's indecent proposal. <laughs> With Sade playing in the background and a wind machine going on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know where that that's going. That would enliven the story live for me. Mm, yes, it would. Uh, yeah, not sure about that. We um, also kind of have to mention the end of Rob Ron. Rob Ron gone. Rob gone. Rob got yeah. Rob wrong. Oh, again, we've not seen Fridays yet, but we know, mm-hmm. don't we, in advance? We do. That, um, this because is because our Ryan ears Hawley. are to the ground. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Hawley's yeah. last appearance on the show. Robert has been transferred, we believe, to the Isle of Wight, a, pris- a different prison, uh, and so he's going to serve out his days there, his life sentence. So I don't think Aaron's moving to a little cottage down the road from the prison in the Isle of Wight, no. so you can't love him that much, frankly. I think they could do like a DVD yeah. special in a year's time where yeah. Robert gets day released at Allen Bay. <laughs> or Black Gang Shine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like that, you know. I, that's a bit 1998 DVD spin off, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's what they should do. <laughs> do they still do that? No. Well, that, they should. Yeah. They but should for this reason. I think that they could have had like a kind of, oh, this is the end of Rob Bron. Here's your best bits. And it was just like <laughs> the hot and bypass crash. Uh, Aaron <laughs> chained to a radiator, covered that. in blood. It would be like when they did it in Big Brother, and in you'd have you'd have Robert and Aaron in a little yeah, corner oh, on the screen. This? Oh no! Oh, you're not showing that. <laughs> oh no! Have they ever had any happy times? No, Robert and Aaron. No. Have they ever, aside from exchanging vows? Yeah, that was quite happy. That's quite nice. That was a nice episode. They were smiling. Uh, that is the only good day they've ever had. Yeah, I think it is. Um, Everything else has just been crying, a complete horror show. Crying, crying, <laughs> crying, more crying. Well, Danny Miller is Britain's best crier, isn't he? Yeah, so yeah. That's, yeah. You know. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I don't. I, I think it's you know, it's toxic. I'm <laughs> sorry, Rob Ron fans. It's toxic. It was. It never really worked out, did it? And no. it was never going to. So yeah. Yeah, that's kind of move on. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I do want to mention Hollyoaks. Yeah, now you're the Hollyoaks fan in this partnership. I am. Uh, um, I, we do divide got a working up. knowledge. Well, we used to, I've got a working knowledge, but we kind of divide it up, don't we? Mm-hmm. Um, so I cover Holby and Casualty. Indeed. You don't do medical dramas. I don't do medical dramas because I can't. I find them difficult to watch. I'll be very honest because everyone's wearing the same thing, and I can't really. D- I had this problem with the bill. Do you have that problem with Star Trek? Weirdly, no, because some of them are aliens. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I can identify. Their points of difference. I, yeah, procedural dramas, I'm not sure. Maybe it's because I'm so used to soaps where everyone's quite diverse and people are doing different jobs, different parts of society represented. I get very confused when everyone's in the same uniform, So, and I, I, I don't know who anyone Stick is. So clear. for that reason, I, I'm not really across the medical dramas, but yeah, Hollyoaks is... Uh, is you know something I uh, see. I don't go near Hollyoaks because I'm 105. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to get involved because they just had their biggest week of the year, Stunt Week. Yes. Even you've heard of Stunt Week. I have, yeah. So this is involving a crane and crane and uh, pain. girders being dropped in onto the village. Yeah. Girders that they make iron brew from. Girders, girders. <laughs> uh, yes, girders. All of that. A crane collapsed, sunk into some tunnels. Yeah. People were trapped. <clears throat> People who shouldn't be sleeping together were, uh, and it was all very exciting. But probably the most noteworthy thing of Stunt Week is that nobody died. Mm. So this is Hollyoaks Stunt Week. Everyone's like, oh, it's cast clear out it's the october yeah. cast clear out who's dead no one's dead is there still time though because could somebody have sustained what seems like a, a, a very minor injury only for it to then turn ah. into an aneurysm in two weeks time you've watched a lot of holby city and casualty haven't you that's yeah. what happens well what's like a low-lying space. pain yeah. a low-lying if someone was like 
whacked in the head with a girder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By December. Yeah, it's that's a brain it. tumour. It's a brain tumour, they're yeah. done. Uh, yeah, so we did take a bite to Cleo McQueen, though. Mm-hmm. Um, rather like Julia Golding, uh, Nadine Mulcairin is going off on maternity leave. There was a lot of big handbags covering her bump. Have they been able to cover that very effectively? With a lot of big handbags. And um, the, the character is training to be a nurse, so she's got a lot of big folders and clipboards <laughs> yeah. uh, and standing behind hospital beds. A lot of that going on. So, okay. um, yes, but she left but didn't die so that was the exit of stump week so how did you think stump week this year compared to that one where someone was hanging off a ferris wheel i think you are going to really really be hard pushed to to be exploding ferris wheel burning wooden maze yeah uh fun fair disaster because that was so bonkers and so kind of crazy um this was it was very different it was it was in daylight and a lot of the times the stunts happen at night so Mm. that gave it quite a different feel Mm, mm. Um, and they basically trashed the exterior set Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was it was like the tram crash you know they kind of smashed it all up so they've got to put it back together again now all the scenes of like you know but i love that when it happens in soaps like when there's a fire in the rovers yeah six months later it's like exactly the same inside you thought oh we'll we'll use this as an opportunity to kind of give the pub a whole new feel but no it still looks like it's, it's 1985 yeah <laughs> it's still the same so i imagine um although uh who's i don't really know what it's going to do but they need to <laughs> they need to rebuild it quickly otherwise there can be no um exterior scenes no. <laughs> it looked like you know <laughs> threads <laughs> <laughs> the post-apocalyptic Hollyoaks is what we're yeah. going to be treated to now. Everyone just standing in rubble. That's what we're looking forward to now for the next few months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but well done, Hollyoaks, on Stunt Week. And well done, the cast for surviving and no one um, g- being given their marching orders. It was funny, actually. I mean, I, I, when I was looking at what stories were doing well on the RadioTimes.com yeah. website, who dies in Hollyoaks Stunt Week oh, was yeah. riding high for a good few days. Yeah, people going crazy for but it. But you didn't put in the article, did you? Nobody. <laughs> I'll update it now. <laughs> yeah. Who dies? No one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to disappoint you, yeah. readers and viewers. Um, so any other business, David? I think that, oh, we need to talk about previews for next week. Yes. What, can, what do we know? What can we tease is happening next week in let's the look at, uh, oh, a bit of product placement oh, there. Radio the Times. TV's let's have a little... TV listings. Go, go a little Radio glance Times. what I wrote about this week. What did you write about? So uh, there's more Shona... Yeah. And Gale stuff on Monday. Mm-hmm. Tuesday's Holby City. Oh, Paul Bradley is back on Holby City. Oh, Nigel from EastEnders yes. in Old Money. Professor Elliot Hope. I do know who he is because he doesn't, he wears a suit. So <laughs> he's not in I, scrubs. I, yeah, I know him. I can yeah. identify him. Oh, uh, Hollyoaks next week yeah. is a big whodunit starts, doesn't it? <gasps> yeah. Who shot Mercedes? Yes. Everyone is a suspect. Well, seven people. Uh, yes, Mercedes. Uh, uh, is shot uh, by a mystery assailant. That's very exciting. That's Wednesday. So she's in the loft when she gets Basically, shot. yeah, Mercedes um, has this big showdown where she slags everyone off, basically, and then um, everyone hates her. And she gets drunk and uh, breaks into the empty loft nightclub and dance has a, like a private rave with yeah. Murder on the Dance Floor playing, and then someone just comes in and shoots her. Did they? Do you think they came <laughs> up with Murder on the Dance Floor first and then just work backwards? I imagine so. Yeah, because yeah. that is too good an opportunity to pass Absolutely. up, isn't it? Absolutely. So, yeah, then we've got um, Pam Coker. Back next Thursday. Hurrah! On welcome home. Never go. Never leave again. And then Friday, yes, um, is a bit of a blur of taffeta tool because uh, it's double weddings. I thought it, you were going to wear something nice for the podcast next week. That's yeah, I might wear like a little fascinator. Please do something like that. Yeah, because um, we've got um, Keegan and Tiffany. Oh yeah, they're going to get married mm. and. Uh, their nearest and dearest in hot pursuit behind okay, them. Okay, that's exciting. And then we've got the potentially fatal Bistro Bonanza that we were referring to earlier Blimey. for Shona and whether David will be released from oh prison yeah. or not. Well, exciting times next that's week. to look ahead. That's look ahead. So that's look ahead. And that concludes the inaugural yes. uh, RadioTimes.com Soapbox podcast. Thank you for joining us. I hope um, you're happy. I hope you're happy. Uh, we've enjoyed it. <laughs> Don't tell us if you're not. Don't tell us if you're not. Um, you have to go to radiotimes.com forward slash soap newsletter. And have to. You have to because it's going to be great because you get a newsletter sign up and you're going to find out. Who doesn't love up. a newsletter? Who doesn't love a newsletter? Please sign up to that. You get lots of lovely soap news and stuff. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. Uh, and then you can get this podcast uh, from Apple Podcasts, Spotify and wherever else you may get your podcasts from. We'll be back next week and we'll be here every week. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, David. Thank you, Johnny. Goodbye. Goodbye.